I know everyone in the audience, but I know more than a few of you. I um, will start by just reading my statement, um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. In, um, I keep myself I thank you. <laughs> in my opinion, the future of storytelling lies in new technology and the diversity of its users. Um, the continued use of new technology, coupled with the ever-evolving faces of storytelling and our increasing access to the stories within which we all identify. Um, I can turn on YouTube, HBO, Sundance, the BBC, and NBC right now, today, and find stories about virtually any subject. Some good, some bad, but a myriad of choices nonetheless. I'm excited by those choices. Um, truth be told, I'm really inspired by those choices. Um, it's been kind of my mantra since I was uh, a child to see the stories of uh, a bunch of different people, much like my family, um, portrayed on television, in film, in all different types of things. I'm the youngest of 12, and I have a Jewish sister-in-law, an East Indian sister-in-law, um, an African-American sister-in-law, a Dominican brother-in-law. Um, our family is amazing. I have a daughter with autism. I have a niece who is completely deaf. And I can see the world from a, just an amazing set of choices um, because I've lived these experiences with all these different people. Um, let's see. As a young person of African, Indian, and Latin descent a generation ago, I felt my story was only being told by those who knew nothing about me. Um, my history, left to other interpreters, was completely opposite of my point of view. Um, but today, now, and well into the future, I see people who share these sen sentiments are taking more chances, um, telling their own stories, telling their stories with their iPhones, with their little tiny cameras, with on Facebook, uh, in, on YouTube. Um, and these stories are being heard, applauded, and celebrated. This is, inspires me and will continue to inspire me well into the future. Um, BAPAC's concept of a World Congress is an incredible opportunity, I feel. It's a gift, really, um, to create stories as well as to tell them. Every time the Latihan is received and accepted in a spiritually selected location, um, the magic of the Latihan's influence is felt, and it really does change lives. Um, our voices being heard by God and recognized by humanity in meaningful and engaging ways is a blessing. Uh, the principle of young and old with generations of information being disseminated on every platform imaginable and the complex accessibility of these stories from Facebook to the Teatro Principal last night is the brilliance of Subaru. Uh, the technology, the diversity, and the era in which we exist is the future of storytelling. Um, I don't know. Today, I'm a storyteller. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm, before anything else, I'm a mother and a parent to two really brilliant children. And I say that because God made them uh, through me, not I'm, not that I made them. Um, I, can, I can end with saying that <clears throat> last night after our um, wonderful show of Creativity and Captivity at the Teatro Principal, I, um, I came, we came over here to the hotel in the lobby and my phone started ringing. And my, uh, the only phone, the only thing I answered because it's way too expensive is, um, the FaceTime calls of my children. So my son called, and um, this summer I uh, I let go and allowed my daughter, uh, well not allowed my daughter, but got my daughter into a program so that she could learn how to drive. She's 20 years old. I've been driving her to college for the past two years, which is about 50 miles away from my house. And it's been kind of taxing on our, our financial status as well as just 
me as a person and an individual, the driving in DC traffic, which is the worst in the world, I think, um, is no no fun. So um, she's you know she was a little bit apprehensive for a while. Uh, people with autism have this thing. Uh, whether or not they can or can't drive. And I think that she had gotten a lot of influences from different people telling her that she couldn't drive. I always tell her she can do anything that she wants to do. So uh, she went to a school that was an hour away <laughs> and she stayed the week there and I would pick her up. And so every week I would say, Desi, how are you doing with uh, the driving? And she was like, I think it's gonna be okay, but realize that this is only I'm only learning in books. I've got to get behind the wheel. And I was like, ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, um, so before I left, I told my son, who is a year younger than her, um, I said, Louis, you're going to have to help your sister with the driving. And in your car, not mine. And he said, OK, but I think Desi feels more comfortable. He has a Jeep Cherokee, and I have a little Saab, which is my little pride and joy. And so um, he said, he took me to the airport and he said, I'm going to let Desi drive the Saab, Mom. <laughs> as I, as he said, you can't do anything about it because you're getting on a plane. <laughs> so I wrote him back and told him he was very funny and that I didn't have Desi on the insurance of uh, the Saab, but I had her on the insurance of his Jeep, so he was stuck. <laughs> and he started laughing. He was like, she's going to drive your car. Last night he called and he said, Mom, Desi and I drove around the block five times. Now my neighborhood is about the size of the convention center um, area and I was just, I said, did she crash into a tree? Did she go too fast? What happened? He said, I told her to pretend that there was a balloon underneath the gas pedal and not to pop it. And I was like, son, I, I was just, I was, I was, brought down to tears. No one uh, understood why I was crying at that particular moment. But the joy in the fact that my brilliant son taught his sister how to drive carefully around the block was a complete and utter triumph. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity to tell my story. Yeah. <laughs>